So how to get into CTFs for beginners. Now, when I was new to this stuff, I definitely wish I kind of knew how to get into it. It was a little bit intimidating at first, but I did make the leap. I'll show you guys how I did it and how I would recommend doing it today here in 2021. So yeah, definitely stay tuned if that sounds interesting. Hey guys, this is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. This is a video kind of that I've, I've heard requested in the comments section a little bit here and there. People kind of asking about how to get started, basically. And really, you can get started with CTFs. It's one of the best ways to get started. But even within CTFs, sometimes it's like, how do I even get started in that? Because it can be a little bit intimidating uh, at first glance when you go up to something, especially if you're a complete beginner to all of this. So really, it depends on what your prerequisite knowledge is, I would say. If you don't even know how like the internet works in, in its most basic form, you don't know how networking works at all, then you're going to want to start there with the f foundations, the IT fundamentals, and things like that are very important to understand. It's kind of prerequisite knowledge. And that is part of the reason why they always say that you know, this pen testing, you know, the pen testing role, the offensive security side, or even security in general is not really an entry level position because there is a lot of prerequisite knowledge that you really need to know uh, before you can exploit something, you got to understand how it works, right? And so that is where I would recommend getting started, learning some basic networking stuff. Now, as with everything on the internet, it is possible to learn all the stuff completely for free right? All the information is out there. But really, my recommendation would be be willing to spend some money to invest in yourself, you know, to learn this stuff, because it's really going to streamline the process of learning. And, uh, you know, if you try to learn everything for free, then you're going to have to spend a lot more time aggregating your resources, worrying about is this a good resource or a bad resource, and just finding everything yourself, right? And you're not going to get a is nice interface and uh, training learning environment as if you would just invest in yourself, you know, buy the premium subscription to try hack me. I would definitely recommend it. It's very worth it. Uh, in my opinion, doing it. And so when I first learned this stuff, you know, I did go the route of pretty much trying to do everything for free. Now I will say back then I didn't, there weren't as many amazing resources as there are today. Most certainly uh, that is one advantage that you have starting out as a beginner today. So when I first started with CTFs, I first the first thing that I did was I I found Hack the Box. Uh, no, actually, I did find some Vulnhub boxes. I do believe way back. I guess Hack the Box wasn't my initial foray into all of this. It really was uh, Vulnhub, and so I found some boxes on there. And I stood them up in my environment. I figured out how to do that, right? And I, you know, I was pretty lost. I'm like, okay, how do I exploit this thing? And, uh, you know, you fire up the VM and you're like, it, you're prompted for login. You're like, well, how do I log in? It's like, well, you got to hack, you got to hack it. You don't just log in, right? <laughs> like, what are the credentials, you know? But what you do is, or what I did, I should say, is that, you know, I looked up some write-ups on the boxes because I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I had a vague idea. Like I knew, you know, to run Nmap and I knew what the ports were and things like that just from like university. But, you know, the first the first thing that I ever exploited, I remember, was the MS-067 Windows XP vulnerability, right? The SMB one. And so that was just using Metasploit, right? I started with Metasploit exploiting a basic vulnerability, you know, putting a payload from MSF Venom on a flash drive and rooting a box. That was not technically a CTF, but that was my first experiences of actually getting shells, actually hacking, right? And so that was where it all started. And then when I actually got into CTFs, I had an idea because I've gotten shells before and things like that, but I didn't really have a solid understanding of how to go from, you know, point A to point Z. And so I would look at write-ups and try to figure out what they did and then try to reverse engineer their process. But you can definitely do that today and you should at least do that as a supplement. But what I would really recommend uh, if I were starting out today is I would start with TryHackMe, an excellent resource. 
especially if you don't, if you're completely starting from zero and you don't even know like basic networking, basically how the internet works and websites and all that, they have really good rooms for that. And they have learning tracks, which are paths where you can learn various things in the offensive security, right? And they even have some blue team stuff as well. Well, that's a topic for another video perhaps, but you know, they have like a, a web, a web app hacking uh, path where you can learn how do you, you know, how do web apps work? How do you exploit them? Right. They have an offensive pen testing path where you can learn basically uh, how to be a, a pen tester, red teamer, things like that. You know, prepare you pretty well for OSCP. I've done both of those paths completely A to Z, right? And they're both excellent. And if you get the premium version of Try Hack Me, you get access to all their paths, all the courses. So I would recommend that. It's a really good way to really aggregate your learning, really streamline your learning process so you can focus the most on actually learning the content rather than scouring the internet and trying to hope that you find something that not only is a good resource, but also provides a good practice for whatever you're learning, right? The amazing thing about Try Hack Me is that not only do you learn the concepts, but you actually get to get hands-on with actually doing it. And, and, you know, as you, as most of you know, getting hands-on in this field is very, very important because it's a very hands-on job. It's a technical role, a technical position. So you can know the theory all day, but what makes us pen testers is we're actually able to put our hands on the keyboard and be able to actually uh, execute this stuff, right? And so an amazing way to get into CTFs, I would say is start with try hack me. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also start with Hack the Box, which is a very good resource as well. Um, and what I would say there is if you're a pretty beginner, you know, preferably with Hack the Box is if you had a little bit of prerequisite knowledge, like you understand how networking works, you understand how the internet works. It's a very basic, it's not anything crazy in terms of prerequisite knowledge, but you understand the basics, right? Uh, if you were in that position, what I would say is that you know, you could probably start with something like a hack the box where, you know, you just get started, you watch some IPSEC videos, or maybe you, you know, find some write-ups on the boxes in the beginning, you just do the retired boxes, right? And you start to reverse engineer it. This is kind of the way I learned, right? And you can kind of see, uh, okay, this is what they did. This is how they were able to hack this. And this was their methodology. And then you keep doing that for a while and you start to get a feel for, uh, how to actually do it on your own. And then you challenge yourself by kind of jumping in the deep end of the pool and go for some boxes where you don't look at the write-ups and you just do it all yourself. And you keep, you know, you kind of alternate between guided practice and going off on your own and trying to do it without looking at the write-ups. And, you know, basically over time you refine your skill set here and, you really start to prepare yourself for, you know, where, wherever you want to go from there, doing CTFs, um, you know, getting OSCP, you know, entering the job market, starting to apply for jobs and being qualified. So that is really what I would say is a really good roadmap, a way to go from no prior knowledge or very little prior knowledge to being able to do CTFs or whatever you want to do beyond that. So yeah, hopefully this video was of help to you. If so, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button as well to help get this message out there. And you know, if there's any additional questions, maybe something I missed, let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to get started on what you need to know for OSCP and you want to go that route, uh, check out one of these videos on the screen now and I will see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.